I want to uh, start showing you all a little bit about keying. So I'm going to show two very short clips and um, we'll talk about the difference between each one. So I'll import and I've set up my folder keying, my vid video assets. I have two clips, one from The Lion King and one from Ghostbusters. Uh, and we're going to start with the one from The Lion King. This is the original animated one. So I want to basically take this ostrich and uh, Simba and Nala, and I want to take them and isolate them get rid of this blue background and only have the asset of the animals. So first of all, uh, the clip's a little bit longer than I want, so I'll just come here. Uh, I can come over to this blue bar, drag this back. That will put that um, in the cycle that I want. I'll probably I'll take this down a little bit and then maybe take this take this up a little bit uh, and I'm gonna right click go to trim comp to work area just so that I'm not having to like scale in and out a lot just work at four seconds instead of um, the ten seconds that we had so uh, we can we can. Actually, you we can start off with something called key light, and this is actually for green screens, but we can use it um, in in a number of ways. So, uh, before we go any further, this is this is really useful to set up your screen in a particular way. I'm going to double click on my uh, video layer down here. And when I do that, I go into the actual video layer. I have a composition and I have a video layer. And they're uh, two separate things. I want to take the video layer and I want to click it, hold it, drag it down so this lights up right over here. And this way I can see my composition and my video layer at the same time and this will be useful in a second. I'm going to come over to key light and first I actually want to change this from final result to uh, we can we'll start off by looking at intermediate result and then I'm gonna drag drag my eye dropper tool and I'm gonna come over and I'm going to select of uh, the general color that I, I want to use for my key light. So we'll click and you can see uh, it got some of it but not all of it and um, we actually want to come down here and you should have this bar and where it says view we want to change this to none because we want to be able to still see this blue background over here so that we can come back over here and make different selections. All right, there's a few, there's just only a few things that we want to change over here in Keylight. And one of them is going to, we don't want to touch the screen gain. Um, generally, you don't want to really mess with the gain. Uh, but, we can we can take a look and we can see how our mat is doing by going to status and anywhere there's black that means transparency and then anywhere there's gray that's sort of like there's information and then where there's white that's where there is solid we can also look at screen mat that will help and so we're uh, from these, from these two, from status, we can really tell that like we've got a we've got a ways to go still. So let's um, 
go down to screen balance. So this is generally one of two numbers. This is either 95 or it's five. So let's change it to five and see if it helps. Yes, it did. It gave us a lot more white solid space where we want uh, the solid space. So we're gonna keep that at five instead of 95. And I'm gonna open up screen mat. And then really the only two, a couple of more things that we change, we can um, change the clip, bat, clip black and the clip white. And this is um, basically bringing the threshold closer together. Right now you see white is all the way at 100 and black is zero. And so they're, they're far apart. But if we start raising up the black, it's going to eat away all this extra area. And then we could take uh, the white down just a little bit to get rid of that little gray area that was there. So I'm going to scan through, just make sure it looks all right. So everything that is white is looking pretty good. There's no holes in it. So let's go ahead and uh, jump back from status to, we can check out screen mat again and looks pretty good, solid white and uh, jump back to intermediate results. And there is, we can tell like, okay, there's, there's a slight, line mostly around Simba and Nala. There's there's a little bit of information down here. What we can do is we can add a mask and this is called a garbage mask. So I'm going to right click mask, new mask, and then I'm going to change to my pen tool right up here. I can find my mask down in the footage, if I open it up, mask, mask, mask path. But I want to be able to, I want to, I want to take my pen tool and I want to just kind of um, cut some of this off. Next thing I want to do is I want to add simple choker. I want to drop this on. I'll take this and put it back to none. Um, oops. Let's see what happens when we go up one. So we bump it up a little bit more. It's kind of starting to affect down here more than I would like. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do for that in a second. But I bumped my, my choke mat up just a little bit. And now I want to have key cleaner. And uh, you can see how that sort of softened the edge just a little bit. All right, so this is actually great. Um, we 
need to think about what we're using our material for and like if this is going to be on the big screen then maybe there would be an issue uh, if we make a solid we can go up to layer at the top solid and put in red and drop the solid down below okay so in this circumstance, yes, we we can still see some of that line. It doesn't look perfect, but um, yeah, we need to think about what we're using it for. Uh, is this going to have a background color that contrasts with it? But for, for a computer screen, for a phone, um, this is fine. And also it kind of depends a little bit on how, how large are we uh, making the asset or, or how are we using the asset? The more we scale it down, the less of an issue that's going to be. So for this, uh, I, think it's, I think it's pretty good. Um, let's go back to 100. But I do want to show you a little bit of, of how we could adjust this more. So I'm going to uh, duplicate the layer. And I want to think about working with the, the top half and the bottom half. So I'm going to open up my masks. And um, I'm going to change the color of one of them. I'm going to make one red so we can see that. And now I really, I want to think about keying as if I'm uh, breaking it up. So I'm only going to think about keying the top half. And then uh, my second mask. This one, I'm only going to think about keying the bottom half. And we can see actually if I if I turn on and off my layers, I turn off the top, I turn off the bottom. But there is this uh, area where they overlap slightly. Thought I could show you both masks at one time, but I guess because they're on different layers, I can't but our masks overlap right in the middle. So now, uh, if we want to say, adjust the bottom half a little bit more, then um, we could, I'm just gonna restart. I'm gonna go back to key light. And I want to choose a different color for the bottom half because it is uh, far more, it, it has a bit more of this sort of purple texture and so I want to um, adjust it a bit more. So we'll, we'll put this back at 5 and I want to do uh, status, I want to change this back to none so I can grab something. And now let's try clipping. Oh, it's, I forgot to change that to five. So you can see what happens if I take my clip black up above 94, it flips. And remember that has to do with the threshold. Okay. I 
think this is pretty good. I don't want to get too low because I, I want to make sure I get rid of all that material down there. But now I'm going to add, uh, I'm, I'm going to do a simple choker, take this up to one, and uh, key cleaner. Reduce chatter. Reduce chatter. Okay. So we have different, uh, we do have a little bit of different stuff going on. This one, we have a, a smaller threshold, 80 to 94. Um, this one's a little bit larger. And the larger you can keep your threshold, generally the better um, things hold up. But not necessary. Uh, But this is, I mean, if you have an area that like you're having a really hard time, you can get the, the key for like the top part, but you can't really get the key for the bottom part. Um, I suggest trying to break it up into two different sections. So we can close this now. Um, and then if I wanted to use this in another composition, I could right click, pre-compose, and I'll say Lion King. And then I can scale this down very easily. And I can duplicate this, Command D, move, Command D, move. And I could delay these very slightly. And remember, video takes a long time. The more effects that you add on the video, the uh, the more it takes to render. So, okay, so our Lion King example was easy because the sky was blue. Generally, the uniform color around our characters, and so. This is uh, also kind of how you'll approach doing green screen. Green screen can be troubling sometimes and challenging, but um, you'll use key light in order to execute green screen. And then there's a couple other effects that we'll add on top when we look at that. I do want to show you how to key out something that is it doesn't have a uniform background. So I'm going to call this stay puffed because um, we are using the stay puffed marshmallow man from Ghostbusters. This is my clip and I want to remove this character and isolate it. So I'm going to do the same thing, bring my uh, end work, uh, work work area end right there, trim comp to work area, and this is where we're going to look at these different channels. So we have red, green, and blue, and then of course when we do alpha, it's going to be just a big white square because that is our, uh, it's just a video that we have. And so we want to basically eat into this white square and start providing some transparency. I can uh, start doing that with an, an, an effect called extract. And... I'm also going to bump up curves just a little bit, bump up the contrast in curves. So I'm going to take my curves and I'm going to put it above extract. And then let's, let's do that. 
about right there. And we can come back and we can look at the channels again. Um, I know that this one, I'm going to use the red channel, I believe. So when I come down to extract, I also have different channels I can select. I'm going to select red. And I'm going to start to bump up the black point. So any pixels that have the value below 52 are just uh, solid black. Okay, that's decent. Um, we're getting an all right area over here on the left side. So let's call this left. And we could also look at just the other channels if we do want to see, but maybe that's, um, maybe that's starting to eat into it too much. Blue. They're all pretty good. Um, actually, maybe I want to use blue. I'm getting a pretty clean line around here. Um, there's definitely some scatter, but there's a lot of clean areas, so that's nice. Um, All right, so let's, if we change this to alpha, we can see that we have started, it, remember this, this before, this was just solid white, and now we have cut into the blue channel, and um, when we look at the alpha, after we've made that adjustment, this is what we have. So if we were to take a uh, solid. Let's use yellow. Oh, I'm looking. I'm looking at it in alpha, so that's why it's all white. But if we were to take a solid and we go back to RGB, this is what we have clipped away, and we want to continue to keep clipping this part away. And then we're going to want to put this area back in. But right now, uh, pretty good for now. So remember what I did in the Lion King one. I, I doubled my layer. And I'm, I'm going to call this one right. So I want to make a mask. I'm going to get rid of that yellow. New mask on my left. And this isn't disappearing. All of this material isn't disappearing. Why is it not disappearing? Because I still have my right layer that I duplicated turned on so I can turn that off and this is my garbage mat so we'll bring this a little bit further down because we want to make sure we keep all of the marshmallow in there Okay, uh, now I'm going to turn this, turn my left off, have my right. I'm also going to make a mask on my right. Bring this down.
Okay, so we can cut this. But we need to bring this down further. Maybe that can go in a little. This should be pulled out just a little. All right. Uh, and let's see if we can adjust this a little bit more on this right hand side to get rid of this road area. It might be challenging. Um, so I'm going to try the red this time and we can bump that up. So again, we are definitely eating into the character a lot, but right now I'm mostly concerned about the edge um, and getting rid of some of this material. So I am fine with that. Let's turn both of them on. So in order to get a better alpha of our Stay Puff Man, we are going to need to use tracking software. So alpha right here it looks pretty much the same because of the fact that uh, our character is mostly bright areas um, all right so we need to be able to fill back in this this section and part areas of the head and um, there's a software that we can use called mocha and it is part of After Effects, at least uh, we have this free version that is part of After Effects. There is a, a version that you can pay for, uh, Mocha Pro, and it can do more stuff, but this is all we're going to use for this class. In order to open it, we hit Mocha. This opens the software, and this is a tracking software. You can track things in After Effects, However, Mocha does a better job, so we're going to use Mocha. If you do not have a workspace like this, then uh, you should uh, switch this to Essentials. You might be in Classic, so let's just switch it to Essentials. The hand will sort of focus in on our area, and what we're going to do is we're going to make a mask very similar to how After Effects makes masks and we will use the pen tool. We're going to make key points, keyframes down here along our timeline. Then after we make some keyframes we are going to track it. So um, I'm going to divide the body in half kind of like we already have. You can see how it's behaving. And I actually don't know how to um, click off, so I just usually go back up here to the arrow key. Now you can see down here we have a green marker, that's our keyframe. I'm going to move ahead to halfway and I'll come back up and I'll start to move my keyframes. I'm sorry, start to move my anchor points. That's fine, we're still keeping the edge of the hand right there, it's pretty tight, but that's fine. up a little bit and I'll move to the end now I'm gonna come in between there we go 
I'm going to come in between right here, make a keyframe. Just make sure everything is where we need it. So it's good. So make a keyframe and then uh, I'll come here. Let's make a keyframe here as well. And now we'll kind of slide along, see where we need to keep making keyframes. So one here. Let's go back to here, finish this. That's all right. Um, oops. Make sure we're on that keyframe. That's fine. Um, right here. The arm that's good it's pretty tight but that's fine uh, and maybe take that in a little take this in a little uh, I want to be on the keyframe that I've already made so let's take this in a little. Okay, this is fine. Uh, so when I am happy with what I'm doing, um, I'm going to track this. So in order to track it, I'm gonna come over here and I'm also gonna turn on perspective. So these are the ways in which we can track and the data we can make and then I'm going to hit this button. Let's first call this left side. So now I'll hit track. And up here we have our progress bar and this uh, definitely can take some time. Okay, so now I want to do the exact same thing for the left side. I'm sorry, for the right side. I want to do the same thing for the right side. I'm just going to grab my uh, pen tool again, come over here, and do the same thing. I'm going to make a few more uh, vertices this time just so that I have a bit more control than I did last time. I don't know, maybe that's overkill. That's fine. I wanna change the color. You can do that by selecting. Oh, I have to hit okay. There we go. And I'll change this to right side. Here we are at the beginning. And uh, sorry, I thought our playhead was at, at the uh, at the beginning, but it's actually at the end, and that's where our keyframe is. So I'm gonna start to move my playhead backwards, move it here to the middle. Okay, double check. We're clipping that, uh, the, the head right there a little bit, just barely. Let's just move that up. Okay, so I want to track it now. And I want to make sure that, um, I'm just going to say none for that, and let's make sure that it's still. Yes, okay. Uh, in a second, we're going to do this link to track uh, with a new track, but not quite yet. So we want to make sure that this says none. 
and I'm going to hit forward. Okay, so let's see how we start to apply these maps to our After Effects footage. So I'm going to hit uh, save, and then I can just close this out. Now, in my Mocha panel here, I'll open up Matte, and I'll say Create AE Masks. And you can see that now I have my uh, masks that were in Mocha. Now they're here on the screen. And this is on my the right side. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to delete the old uh, garbage map that we had and just use the new one, which is this pink one. And I'm going to say Command C. Um, and then I'm going to come down to left and command V and now I can delete my left side up here and down here I can delete the old garbage mask okay so we are uh, getting a little bit better still we got rid of some of the stuff now a lot of the material um, Unfortunately, like some of this we do have to we have to go back into Mocha again and we have to start tracking more and we have to unfortunately start using more and more keyframes. Um, this is sort of a process of rotoscoping where we start to go frame by frame. But um, it, it goes pretty fast. Uh, so now I will... Uh, I'm going going to duplicate this, and I'm just going to call this core. And I'm going to go back into Mocha. I can restart it with clicking Mocha. I have all my information here. Now I want to start to track the head because. We really, it, we were missing um, information, a lot of information up here in the top of the head. So in order to zoom in and out, I, uh, on the trackpad, I can click, hold, and drag my finger, and I'll push in closer. So let's make a new map again. And really uh, get closer to our character. That will be good. And it depends on how you want to do this. If you want to do the hat and the head together, I think I would probably do them separate, to be honest. Now I'm going to come in here and start to Trace around the head. I'll start to maybe curve these out just a little. You can do that by by um, dragging the blue inward. Uh, actually, I don't. I I don't need to worry about the bottom section down here all that much at all. I need to worry more about up around up top. Um, so I I forgot about that. I don't really need to worry about this bottom section because I'm going to make another mat that will cover this area. So I'll come here and. Can just 
move this down nice and easy like that. That's good. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm fine with this. I'm going to do this area, the bib we can call it, and uh, I'm going to just click to start making a new layer. And we do need to uh, go pretty far into our Marshmallow Man with this because uh, remember, so let's zoom out a little. Um, so we can cover like the, the full body area to include a lot of this area. We want to include this red area. We want to we want to include as much as as possible really so I'll, I'll call this the torso I guess and um, let's bring it all the way down so torso slash bib so I made my torso and I'm going to track it to the head um, but I need to I need to still track my head. I haven't done that yet. So let's turn on perspective and let's uh, move forward. And you can see because the torso has been linked to the head that it's starting to move with the head. There's definitely uh, some things that we are going to need to adjust. So here I'm just going to continue to work with the mat and play this at high speed um, just so you don't have to watch it all. But I'm going to come in here and I'm going to adjust the torso mat so that it matches Marshmallow's body. Torso is keyframed. I'm going to turn on perspective and I'm going to track it. I'm going to save and I'm going to close this. Now let's see where we are so far with all of our um, uh, all of our mats. So on the core layer, that's where I want to apply uh, my masks. So I'm going to get rid of the mask that is already there. There was a there one of the right the right mask was copied over when we duplicated it. And because we just deleted that, remember, all this extra area showed up because we don't have our garbage mat anymore. If we turn that off, we can see what we really have. So I'll turn that back on and I want to create a E masks on my core. So it's going to create all the masks that I have. I don't need to have the right side. I don't need to have the left side. 
and we're confused because that is still there. Now I'm going to come into my curves and my extract and I'm going to delete that. Okay, great. So we're starting to fill this in and we can look at the alpha. Nice. Very good. So now, now comes the harder parts, um, which is the, the, the arms and the legs. That's really what is next. So I'm going to hop back into Mocha. And I'm going to zoom in. The, the right arm especially that one we're, we're missing a lot of information on so let's start with that one so zoom in so before I start to make more keyframes um, I'm going to I'm going to come over here and I'm going to link this to, I can link it to one of these these things that has a gear on it. So I can't I can't link my right arm to my torso bib because it is the, the torso bib is a child of the head. So I'm going to I can link my right arm. I could link it to the. Um, the right side or I could link it to the head uh, we can try out each one and kind of see how it w works best so I'm going to take the my right arm and I'll link it let's just link it to the right side and see how it looks okay and let's look at the head and see how it looks I feel like it was better on the right side. Kind of retains its shape a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to save again, close this out, and I can hit M to bring up my masks, um, and I want, to, I want to apply my new masks, so I can just go to create AE masks, but it did duplicate stuff, which I don't want to do, let's see, I have my head and my torso. So I'll just delete them and I can get rid of the left side and the right side. So I've realized this clip with the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man might not have really been the best clip to demonstrate the extracting and then mocha with because now it probably seems like we're just going back over top of the character's body with mocha which really we are sort of doing that. I want to point out though that this side right here, this is uh, one of the few sections that really the line stays there, the, or the, sorry, the edge, the edge of the character stays there pretty much the entire time. We don't have to worry too much about large pieces of artifacts sort of coming out of the side of his body. 
So because I'm because I'm not really getting any large clean areas on the edge. I think uh, and and every now and then like we are we're still getting some large artifacts that are sort of a bit too far out and we could cut that off so I think I'm going to come back in here and uh, make some adjustments on these garbage mats so Uh, in order to make a new point, I did figure that out. We can grab this tool right here. I'm going to work on the right side first, right under the hand. That was where we were still having some trouble. So I select right side with my cursor tool, and then I can come over here and just add points this way. So let's zoom in. Uh, we should be able to it'd be nice to be able to see the whole whole form so I'm just gonna take start to take some of this in even closer Okay, so it's done tracking. I want to apply my new mask so I have more of this. So I, so I cut this off right here. Cut off all that extra stuff. I don't want to... Uh, be careful about which layer you have mocha on. So I had duplicated this layer right here at one point in time. So it got moved to here. But then I started using this layer, the core layer, to uh, open Mocha with. So I, I went back to here and I tried to open Mocha. And I was like, where's all my stuff? But it's in here. I have to go back to the, the one that I was opening, go into here. And you see I have all my... Uh, masks that I want so if I if I want to pull one of those masks I have to go to here um, map create AE masks and now remember I'm gonna have a ton of duplicates so I have the head head torso right arm Let's get rid of the left side. We'll keep the right side. We can get rid of head, torso, right arm. Now, if we if we do still want to keep things on separate layers, um, we can we could take the right side, copy this, paste it down here, and we can delete this old mat. So so the benefit of using Mocha and the benefit of using Extract 
if we could use extract and get this right side, I'm sorry, this left side perfectly clean or much cleaner, um, at least in a large area, then that would be great because we wouldn't have to come back over to this side and continue to use mocha. We would really only use mocha in a certain section. So when you can use extract to get a really nice area, then that's, that's great um, and that's very beneficial. Otherwise, um, yeah, mocha is how you're going to have to do a lot of this. And you can see I, I have issues still that I would need to go back and fix. For now, I just want to show you what comes next. So the character looks kind of funny um, because this is clearly not how we would want it to look with bright sections and dark sections. So now I can come into here, make a new comp, and I will say... Um, actually, I'll, I'll pre-comp these instead. So pre-compose and I'll say stay puffed map. And I, I pre-compose them because my comp is already stay puffed and I didn't want to um, have to make a new comp that says stay puffed. and. So, now I'm going to take my original footage, drop it down beneath Stay Puffed Matte, and why would we do that? Because now we have all our footage again. Well, I'm going to come over to our track mat. We're going to use our alpha mat, and there we go. We have our Stay Puffed character who has one solid color, none of the like dark spots, light spots. And then if we wanted to, we could pre-compose this again and we could say stay buffed um, Actually, no, now I will make a new comp. I will say multi stay puffed. And now I can come in here and I will use my stay, cut, stay puffed comp and bring the character down. and do all sorts of stuff with them. I could scale them down. And it definitely needs more work, but that's the process. Um, I'm sorry, this lesson was not the necessarily the clearest probably uh, but I hope you at least kind of understand how mocha works and you see the benefit of using extract for a portion of it and of course we can talk about it more um, together or in class so thanks